In this video, I'm going to provide an example of how to apply Bernoulli's equation for fluid flow. And in this particular example, I'm going to try to apply Bernoulli's equation along with some kinematics to see if I can predict what the range of the water will be if I poke a hole in the side of a container and the fluid in that container is filled up to a height h. The first thing that I'd like to consider are the P1 and P2 terms of Bernoulli's equation. And actually this is one of the more difficult parts of the problem. If you remember, the P1 and P2 terms are related to the pressures that are being exerted on the two points of the fluid that you're considering. So in this case, and every time you're using Bernoulli's equation, you need to think about what those two points in the fluid are. And so the two points that I'm going to select are we will have point one be this point here, which is the top of the fluid in the container. And then we will have point two be this point here, which is the point in the container where uh, we have made the hole in the side of the container and the fluid is exiting out with a, with a speed V. And so we should think, what are the pressures that are pushing on the fluid at points one and two? At point one, the pressure that's pushing down at the top of the fluid here would be atmospheric pressure. And so we could call that P1, or we could simply label that P0 for atmospheric pressure. And then at point two, uh, imagine we had a piece of tape over the hole in the side of the container. When we remove the piece of tape, in order for the water to come out of that hole, it has to overcome a pressure that's being exerted on it by the atmosphere there as well. So the atmosphere is, you could say, getting in the way of the water, and in order for the water to come out of that hole, it does have to overcome that pressure that's being exerted on it. So there is also an atmospheric pressure here that is being exerted on the water as it's attempting to come out of the container. And so the two pressure terms in Bernoulli's equation are, instead of P1 and P2, we could express as just P0 for the atmospheric pressure. And so, uh, so that way we remember, I'll write P0 here and P0 there. The next thing that I'd like to consider are the gravitational potential energy terms that are rho g y1 and rho g y2. And for these two terms, uh, we should be thinking about the difference in vertical position of the two points that we're considering. And in the diagram, I've labeled that as h. So the, the difference in height between points one and two, which is the difference in height between where the water is coming out of the container up to the top of the fluid in the container is h. And so what I could do is I could call y1 a height of zero and y2 a height of h. Really it's not so important. The main thing is we need to make sure that the difference in the heights is h. And so the way that I'll do this is I will say that y1 is equal to 0 and y2 is equal to h. And lastly, we do need to consider those two kinetic energy terms, the terms that include V1 and V2, the speed of the fluid at those two points. And here, we're going to say that the speed at point two is equal to V. So instead of V2, I'll be calling that V, which is shown in the diagram, right? That's the speed that the fluid has when it comes out of the container at point two where the hole is. And here we're going to make a simplifying assumption. For most containers, the size of the hole in the side of the container is going to be much smaller than the size of the opening at the top of the container. And so what I'm trying to say is that if we think back to the continuity equation, we learned that because the flow rate of the fluid is constant, then the product of A times V is constant. And what we learned from that is if the area of the opening through which the fluid is moving gets bigger, then the speed of the fluid will decrease. And so my argument is at point one, the area is much, much larger than the opening at point two. 
And for that reason, the speed of the fluid at point two is much, much larger than the speed of the fluid at point one. And so if we take that assumption to be true, something that we can say in this problem, but not all problems, is that V1 is going to be approximately zero. That assumption is going to go a long way in helping us solve this problem. Let's take a look at all of these terms now and start to eliminate and update the equation based on what we've talked about so far. So first, the P1 and P2 terms were both atmospheric pressure and for that reason they will cancel because there's one on both sides of the equation. Earlier, I labeled Y1 as zero and Y2 as H, but I think to help avoid some confusion, I'm going to reverse what I said. And instead, I'm going to say that Y1 is equal to H and Y2 is equal to zero. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, uh, point one was higher up in the diagram, so I should have called that the greater height. And also, if we don't call Y1H, the entire left-hand side of the equation turns to zero. And while we could have corrected that easily, um, I think that it just makes a little bit more sense for us moving forward to call Y1H. And so for that reason, we'll use these new uh, variables for Y1 and Y2. With that established, the only thing that we have left on the left-hand side of the equation is rho g h, and the only thing we have left on the right side of the equation is one-half rho v squared. The p naught terms cancel with one another. Y2, that term dropped out because it was set as zero. And if we approximate v1 to be zero, the term containing v1 drops out as well. And with this much more reduced equation, I can now see that there's just a row on both sides of the equation, so that should cancel. And I could write this for now as 2GH equals V squared. At the beginning of the video, my hope was to try and predict what the horizontal range of the fluid would be, or where it would strike the ground after coming out of the container, based on how high the fluid was in the container. And so far, I haven't really done anything with kinematics to try and uh, add that in, because clearly how far it travels on the floor uh, will depend on the height of the table, and I should somehow include delta x, because that's the thing that I'm trying to predict. And so now that we have a, a simplified version of Bernoulli's equation with all of the particularities of this problem plugged in, I'm going to shift focus a little bit now to try and talk about the kinematics of the fluid as it comes out. If we treat the fluid like a projectile, then we can say the range of the projectile, delta x, is equal to v naught x t plus one half ax t squared. And if we ignore the air resistance that the fluid might experience as it's going through the air, then there would be no acceleration in the x direction. And for that reason, this last term would go away, it would be zero. And if the fluid is coming out horizontally, which is the goal here, as I've shown in the diagram, then v naught x would simply be v as it's represented in the diagram. And so this equation would reduce down to delta x equals v t. And now we should do the same thing for the y direction. So delta y equals v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. And this equation should reduce a bit as well because if the fluid is coming out of the container horizontally as I've indicated, then the initial velocity in the y direction would be zero. And so this first term would go away, leaving us with just delta y equals one half and the acceleration in the y direction would be g, the acceleration due to gravity in the vertical direction that the water would experience as it's falling to the floor. So I'll write one half g t squared. And these two kinematic equations, delta x equals v t and delta y equals one half g t squared, can be combined to give me an expression for the speed uh, that will include delta x. And so what I'd like to do now is combine these two equations. I would like to solve one of the equations for t and plug it into the other one. And I think the way that I'll do that
is I'll take the top equation and I'll write it as v equals delta x divided by t and I'll solve the bottom equation for t. If I multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by g, and square root both sides, this bottom equation becomes t equals the square root of 2 delta y over g. And if I combine these two equations now, what I get is delta x over the square root of 2 delta y over g. And this equation can be made to look a little bit better, so instead I'll write it as v equals delta x times the square root of g divided by 2 delta y. If I'm going to move that radical up to the numerator, I need to flip what is on the inside of that square root. And so now I have this expression for the speed, and I'd like to plug that into the simplified Bernoulli's equation uh, that we have underlined in blue up above. And so now we have 2gh equals, and instead of v squared, I have delta x times the square root of g over 2 delta y squared. And now if I distribute that squared to everything on the right hand side, I have 2gh equals delta x squared times g divided by 2 delta y. And now let's solve this equation for delta x, which was the thing that I was trying to predict. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 2 and delta y, and then cancel the g's that are on both sides of the equation, I would have 4 delta y times h equals delta x squared. And then if I square root both sides of the equation, what I'm left with is delta x equals the square root of 4 delta y times h, which could be written as 2 times the square root of delta y times h. And this equation is neat because it is an equation that allows us to predict the range of the water by measuring a couple of things that are pretty easy to measure. The height from the hole to the ground where the water would be striking, and the difference in height between where the hole is in the container and the top of the fluid in the container. So by simply measuring delta y and h, we should be able to predict how far the fluid will go. However, one thing that I want to point out is that along the way, as we were deriving this equation, we did make some simplifying assumptions. Things like v1 is equal to 0, and ax is equal to 0. But hopefully, if we were to give this a try, we would find that our ability to predict the range would work out pretty well. So, for example, if we were to set our container at a height such that the hole was about one meter above the ground, and we filled the container to a height of about 20 centimeters, or 0 0.2 meters, and we use this equation to try and predict what the range of the fluid would be before it hits the ground, then you would find delta x should be about 0 0.9 meters. And I think this is probably a reasonable prediction for delta x.